as how guys there's a lot there's a lot of energy i need that energy from you to give me that energy <laughs> okay so <clears throat> today we're going to continue with the activities because on wednesday we we went through the content but before we start today's session i'm going to also do a recap so that we refresh our mind from what we have learned i know that it was too much there was so many things that i've said on wednesday i hope today when we do the activities things will start to unpack and and become easier as well as when you start doing the the exercises yourselves are you able to see my my screen yes yes okay so i want to i want to go out and share my entire screen because i'm i'm going to also demonstrate the um other things like your calculator and how to use the excel spreadsheet that i shared with you and yeah so let's start with today's session welcome to your session 26 today we're looking at activities relating to um regression remember then on wednesday we will then look at active both regression and uh, chi square test <clears throat> because your assignment five is including both of them so but for today we're only concentrating only on the regression activities let me also just double check i know that my unisa is down and your assignment is due on the 30th which is the that following week monday uh therefore the wednesday the 25th we will do the activities relating to both um regression and chi squared and then on the 28 we will also continue doing those two because i was hoping that on wednesday we can do the activities on my unisa life but since my unisa is down I, I won't have time to to do that um so we'll have to i will send you the activities um as a pdf and then you can we can go through them as well Okay, so let's recap <clears throat> on what we did the previous time we were together on Wednesday. So we looked at uh, how to make inferences in terms of coefficient of correlation, coefficient of determination, and the regression line. We also learned how to uh, calculate all of those and how to interpret them. In terms of the correlation, we said the correlation is a relation, it, it, it shows the relationship between two variables, the independent and the dependent variables. So here yeah, <clears throat> we're talking about categorical variable, oh sorry, numerical variables. So for correlation, we look uh, when we test the relationship that exists between two numerical variables, then we use either the scatter plot to visualize the relationship or we use the correlation coefficient where we calculate and it tells us the strength or the direction of that relationship. And these are the type of relationship that we spoke about that it can either be a linear or nonlinear or they can also be no relationship. And we said when it's a linear, it can either be a, <clears throat> a negative relationship or a positive relationship. When it's a non-linear relationship, it can take a form of a quadratic form or it can be an exponential format. And when there is no relationship, therefore it means one variable is at constant and therefore uh, you will there won't be any relationship and with the scatter plot we can also have a coefficient of correlation which is a measure or a value that we calculate that can tell us when we're looking at this type of a visualization what type of uh, um, the coefficient of correlation can it be and that's where we look at either the direction or 
the strength and we said if uh, the value of r lies between negative one and one and if r is greater than zero we say it is a positive relationship when r value is less than zero it's a negative correlation or a negative relationship and when r is equals to zero we say there is no relationship and we also looked at how in terms of the strength how we can define the, that strength based on the range of the values that you get and either you can say when it's when r is one approximately equals to one we say it's a perfect whether it's negative or positive, we say it's a perfect relationship. So you, when it's positive, you will say it's a perfect positive relationship. When it's negative, it will be perfect negative relationship. Also, the value of R, you can also, in terms of the strength, you can say it's strong or it's weak or it's moderate. So depending on the range of the values that you, you are working with. We also, and how to interpret each one of them if we are given them. So I'm not going to go into detail in terms of interpreting all these graphs. We, we've dealt, dealt with that on Wednesday. We also spoke about using the sum square measures uh, to calculate the coefficient of correlation or to calculate the slope or to calculate uh, the, <clears throat> the uh, total variation and so forth. So we need to know how to use the sum square measures as well, because sometimes the sum square measure that you can be given the sum square measures and be asked to calculate the coefficient of correlation. You need to know how the formula uh, works or how to com complete the formula. And we also learned about the measures of total variation, uh, where we said that our total variation, it can be given by two parts, which is your uh, sum square measures of regression plus the sum square measures of errors of that regression line. <clears throat> and we also learned <clears throat> that we can use uh, the total sum square measures to calculate your coefficient of determination. And the coefficient of determination gives you the percentage or the proportion of the total variation in the dependent variable that is explained by the variation in the, y, the uh, X or the independent variable. And your R, which is the coefficient, your R squared, which is the coefficient of determination, lies between zero and one. And it's just the square of your coefficient of correlation because coefficient of correlation is r and if you have your r you can just take the square of that r value it will give you the coefficient of determination and we can calculate the coefficient of determination not from the r but using the sum square measures as well then we also learned how to interpret the coefficient of determination, which um, if R squared is equals to one, we say it's 100% of the variation in Y are explained by the variation in X. And when it's a, any value random from between uh, zero and one, any value, we say some of those, uh, some but not all of the variation in Y are explained by the variation in X. And if the R value is zero, we say that uh, none of the variation in Y can be explained by the variation in, in X, or Y does not depend on X. And that is R squared. And we've learned also how to interpret it by using this um, slide where we were given the R value and we found the R squared by just taking the square of that r and we got that it was 41 percent and we interpreted it to say 41 percent of the variation in the person's salary can be explained by the variation in her education attainment then we went on and and dealt with uh, 
regression analysis. The least goes square. Um, and we explained what regression is because regression is a method that we use to predict a value of your dependent variable based on the value of your independent variable. And since we're only using one independent variable in this instance, we're not doing a multiple regression, you're only looking at one dependent variable, ind independent variable. Um, and we set in terms of your least square regression line, we define our dependent variable as your y variable, which is the outcome variable, which is the variable that we want to predict. And the independent variable is our input variable, which is the variable that we're going to use to uh, predict or explain the dependent variable. And we've learned that this is the regression line, which is your y hat, which is your estimated value, is equals to b0, which is your intercept, plus b1, which is your slope, times your x observation. So it's y is equals to b0 plus b1x. And in terms of the regression line, we also said uh, our b0, we normally do not interpret it, but b1, you are expected to also interpret what the value of b1 mean in relation to the regression, where you will state that your value of b1 is the estimated change in the average value of your y as a result of one unit increase in the values of x and based on the slope as well it can also tell you the direction of your regression line so if it's negative if the value of your slope is negative therefore it means your your relationship is negative and we know when the relationship is negative, we say that it is a decreased relationship or the value, when the value of X are increasing, the values of Y are decreasing. So therefore, when you interpret that, it will be say, um, it shows the decrease average is a, a, a decreased average value of your Y as a result of one unit increase in the values of your X. Because when your X values are increasing, your y values are decreasing. So when your value of your slope is positive, therefore it's a increase in the average value of your y because your value of your y will increase by that value. It will increase by uh, the average value of y as a result of one unit increase in the value of x because when it's positive it means when the values of x are increasing the values of y are also increasing and that is the slope so when you look at the slope and you look at the regression coefficient they both need to tell you the same thing in terms of the direction whereas the regression uh, the correlation coefficient will also tell you the strength of that relationship but it will also give you the direction which also the direction of that you will find it by looking at the sign on your slope i hope i make make it easy for you to understand that and we looked at an example we looked at um using the text grade from the aptitude test and the supervisor grade of this applicants once they have been in employment and we we plotted the um the x and the y values to see the to see the, the 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 relationship between our x and our y and we saw that it was a positive relationship because when the values of the test grades were increasing the values of the supervisor grading was also increasing with the exception of that one outlier that is there. An outlier, is, an outlier is an extreme value, a value out of the norm, out of far away from the other values. Okay, so we also took this and answered the question where we were asked to look at the um, um, regression line and the coefficient of correlation and the coefficient of determination and we said we can take the 
x and y value, put it in Excel and calculate the regression. Do a data analysis on the regression and it gives that this output and where on the output we were able to find all the key measures that we might use to complete the regression model. Where multiple R will be your coefficient of correlation, which is your R and R squared is R square is your coefficient of determination. And in terms of the regression line where we had your y hat is equals to b0 plus b1x. Therefore, it means when we come to the coefficient of this regression output, then our b0 will be our intercept and b1 will be the coefficient of the test. And we just take them and substitute them into the equation and create a regression line where we know that the y hat and the test grades we do not substitute we just leave them as variables unknown variables as they are and this is the question that we needed to answer so in that instance we answered that question using excel and here we're going to answer it using uh, manual calculation and in terms of the manual calculations remember you need to start by getting your regression line. So in order for you to formulate your regression line, we need to find B0. And in order to find the B0, we need the mean, the slope, which is B1, and the mean of X. So therefore it means we need to first find the mean of B, uh, sorry, the B1 first. So we go and find B1, and if you look at B1, we can find B1 using the sum square measure or the summation measures. So here, we can use the sum square errors, so which is the sum square measures um, at the top of X and Y and the sum square measure of X. Substitute uh, the values and then calculate B1. We can calculate the mean of Y, the mean of X, and then substitute into the mean of B0 and then find the B0, which is our intercept, and then substitute into our regression line to formulate our regression line. So when we have our X and Y, if you calculate in this manually, you will have to go and calculate the values of X and Y separately. Uh, you do your X times your Y, your X squared and your Y squared, and then you, summate, you sum them. And once you have created the summation, which is adding all of them, then you can come and substitute into the formula to calculate your slope, calculate your mean, calculate your mean, calculate your intercept by substituting all those three values that you've calculated previously and substitute the values of B1 and B0 into the formula and create your regression line. And that's what we have done. We also looked at how we calculate the regression using, I don't know why I have it twice, using the regression uh, formula or the correlation of the coefficient of correlation also using the same values so you just substitute oh sorry you just substitute the values i don't know why it replaced my table i will fix that but we just use this very same table this table to substitute the values of our summations into the formula and then calculate the coefficient of r. In order for us to calculate r squared, we just take the value of 0, 0,32 and square it and we got 0, 0,1040, I think it was like that. Or I might be lying. And we also looked at how we interpret the regression line because we already have the regression line. We said B0 we don't interpret, B1 we interpret and say 0 0.6 tells us the means that, that the mean value of a supervisor grade will increase by 0 0.625 on average for one additional unit increase of one, uh, test grade because we're saying an increase because of the positive sign on the slope. When we do the activities, we will get used to how we interpret B1 as well. 
And that's what we learned on Wednesday too much. And then we also learned how to use a calculator. So we looked at the steps on how to, we, do we use our calculator to calculate uh, the regression line by following the steps on your, our calculator where we can find our intercept, which is A, and our slope, which is B, our coefficient of correlation, and we can use also Y hat to estimate a new value of Y. Also looked at the sharp calculator as well on all the steps and on the sharp calculator all the values like your regression lines they are they are on your calculator and they are written in in blue so your r will be on the division side your a and your B will be there if you are using a case your a, a sharp calculator. You just need to press your alpha button, which is the green button. Your mean for X will be on button for four, and your mean for Y will be on button seven. Okay. Then we also looked at, oh, this is if you are using a financial calculator, which also looks exactly the same as the sharp calculator because everything is written in orange you just use your alpha your r is on the open bracket your a and a b and your mean on a four and a seven and when you want to estimate the value there is a y head estimate on the close bracket as well okay so now let's start with today's session it took me 30 minutes to re to recap but no worries, let's begin. This one, we can work it out together. Whoever wants to answer, can answer it. If the coefficient of correlation is equal to 0 0.98, which of the following statement is correct? Number one, there is a strong positive relationship between dependent and independent variable. Number two, when the independent variables decrease, the dependent variable decreases as well. Number three, the slope will be positive. Number four, SSY will be positive, which is your some square measure of x and y it says it will be positive so which one of the following statement will be incorrect so based on what we know so far about the regression based on what we know so far what do we know? We know that our, especially with the correlation coefficient, our correlation coefficient is positive. And when it's positive, therefore it means the regression is positive. Then it means when the values of X are increasing, the values of Y are also increasing. And it also tells me that the change in the values of X to the change in the values of Y, which is my slope, is also positive. Therefore, it means my sum square measures as well will be positive if my regression is also positive. So which one? Uh, sorry. Which one is incorrect? Sorry, my sum square measure, wait, sorry, it's not going to be positive, but we know that our sum square measure will just be the sum of X and Y times the sum of X times the sum of Y divided by N. 
So it will just be n times the sum of x, y, minus the sum of x times the sum of y. So this can either even be negative or positive because depending on um, what you will have there. So there's no guarantee on that. So let's look at number one. Number one says there is a strong, rela strong positive relationship between the dependent variable and, and independent variable. Is statement correct? Yes, the statement is correct because it's a positive relationship and based on the based on the strength, this is a strong this is a strong positive relationship. Number two, it says when independent variable decreases, so it means when the values of when the values of y are going down, does the values of sorry, when the values of x are going down, does the values of y also go down? It's a very confusing um, statement because we always relate this in terms of increase. When it's increasing, it's also increasing. But if I'm here, the values, if I'm moving from here to here, I am declining. So because this is the highest value of x and this is the highest value, of y. If I'm moving downwards, this is the value of x and this is the value of y. So when y is smaller, x is smaller. And that's what I will interpret that as. Because if my independent variable is small, getting smaller, it means also my dependent variables are also getting smaller. Because when they are increasing, they are both are increasing in the same direction. My slope is positive. Knowing the sign in front of my regression line, if my sign is positive, therefore my slope also will be positive. My SSS will, is positive. I won't know whether my SSS is positive because I will need to be able to calculate this to know whether is it the negative answer that I get here or a positive answer that I will get the maybe it's a negative or it's a positive I would know so I would have chosen number four as an incorrect one now I want you guys to start talking to me I cannot be the only one talking consider a simple linear regression equation the slope b1 represents Number one, it says the predicted value of y is equals to zero. Remember, we're talking about the slope where it's y hat is equals to b0 plus b1x, where this is our intercept and this is our slope. So number one says the predicted value of y. So it means this predicted value of y will be our slope if the value of x is equals to zero. That's what we need to make, make out for. Number two says the estimated average change in y per unit change in x. So does that interpret what the slope is? The predicted value of y. Does the slope predict the value of y? The variation around the regression line. Is this the variation around the regression? The predicted value of x when y is zero. So are you guys answering the question on the chat? Or let me just check as well. Or am I talking to myself? Which one is the correct? Answer. And I see 
some answers. It's option number two. Yes, it's option number two because this is our intercept. That is not correct. Total regression is R squared and it does not predict the value of Y because you need both of those intercept and the slope to predict the value of Y. So only number two is the correct one. It is the estimated average change in Y per unit change in X. Given a random sample of eight cars drivers issued, uh, a random sample of eight cars drivers insured with a business and having similar car insurance policies were selected. The following table lists their driving experience in years and the monthly car insurance premium paid. And we're given our X and our Y value, and we are asked to find the incorrect. Number one, it says the premium depends on the experience. I don't know that. It means I need to find if they are related, um, if X depends on Y. Um, the Y intercept is equals to 776. The slope is 15 minus 15.58. Therefore, it means I need to calculate this. There is a negative relationship between X and Y. I don't know that. I need to calculate that. And the total variation, which is my R squared, uh, in the independent variable is explained by the variation in the independent variable. So I need to go calculate my R squared to know that. So two ways or three ways or even four ways that you can do that. So you can either use the formulas as given. We can use a calculator and calculate. So I'll use the case you in this instance to answer some of the questions. So my X and Y, I need to pay attention on what they defined as X and what they define as Y. So that is my X, that is my Y. So the first step, mode two, and I press two, and I start putting in the values onto the calculator. First with the X, because I'm using a ratio, I'll do the X first. 5 equal, 2 equal, 12 equal, 9 equal, 15 equal, 6 equal, 25 equal, 16 equal. Uh -huh. Then I have all of them. Just go up, 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 up until I get to the first one. Then go to the right. Start capturing the Y values. 640 equals 8. 20 equals 500 equals 710 equal 440 equal 560 equal 420 equal 600 equal you need to make sure that you have things relate to one another and you have captured the values correctly because if you're not you will not find the correct answer. So I'll just go and double check if my values are correct. I just browsing through. 5 and 640, 2 and 7, 870, 12 and 500, 9 and 7, 10, 15 and 440, 6 and 560, 25 and 420 and 16 and 600. So I have all of my values. What I need to do is go AC, go out. Now I'm ready to answer the question. So I can stand on this side. It says my Y intercept. I know on the calculator, my Y intercept on the calculator. So in terms of the formula Y, H is equals to B0 plus B1. X on the calculator, it will show as Y is equals to a plus b x so since i know that so therefore it means 
my intercept sorry my intercept is a so this i must find a my slope is b so on the on the calculator that will be the case for r squared i will have to go and find r and then press the x squared button so i already know what i need to do let's go do it so let's first find our y intercept shift stat and i go to rec which is five and i'm looking for y intercept which is one and i press equal therefore my y intercept is correct done i'm looking for the incorrect one so let's calculate the slope shift one rec five slope is two which is b equal minus 15.8 which means my slope also is correct so both of them are correct there is a negative relationship that exists between the slope and yes there is because there it's negative therefore it means the relationship is negative so it will be incorrect but i can also calculate my r because r lies between negative one and one and it will also tell me whether the relationship is negative so let's go calculate r shift stat reg r is on button number three and equal there is my r my r is zero minus zero comma seven six so i have r not r squared i need to calculate r squared r squared i just press the x squared and that is my coefficient of correlation it should state that it's 0 0.859 and that is incorrect that's correct that's correct that's correct why depend on this the relationship here is a negative relationship therefore it means when the y depends on y because there is a relationship if it was zero then there is no relationship therefore it does not depend on one another so that's how you will answer the question on one calculate so let's assume that you went and you bought a sharp calculator which is not a casio calculator which looks like this so as you can see this calculator does not have any values on top um these are the latest sharp calculators that people get from the shop so i'll just do the same um, on mode i need stat which is one i need one a plus b x which is the same as what i have there so i'll press one then i have a table similar to what we did with the case show we also as long as there is a table we press the equal sign to enter the data. So I need to, I'm going to use my computer as an equal sign with the enter. So I'll also do the X value first. So I'll go five. I need to be on the calculator itself. Sorry, my bad. This doesn't allow me to use my cup. My so it's going to be a long way to go in terms of this one. So let's put it this way. Okay, I'll move it once I've done a couple of them. So it's five equal two equal twelve equal nine equal now i need the others Fifteen. i made a mistake i just need to delete we either delete the button on this 15 equal 6 equal 25 equal 
16 equal. Then I need to go to the top. I can go there and go back to the top where it is. That's at one. Oh, gosh. Okay. 640 equal. 870 equal. 500 equal. 710 equal. 440 equal. Five sixty equal four twenty equal and six hundred equal. If I did any mistake, I don't know because it time consuming to capture all this. All right, so now I have all the values captured. I'll just go out and I know that I'm doing regression. I'll press the alpha and then I go to state. The state mode is there. Then press eight. And there I have my different um, menus. I need the regression and I press one for regression and they are all my values. So with this calculator, I'm able to see all the answers at, all at once. So my A is 776. My B is minus 15.8. My Correlation of coefficient is 0 0.76 and my coefficient of determination is 58. So whether you use a sharp calculator or a casual calculator, you will be able to get the same answer. Now let's go to this one. What about when I use um, when I use my Excel? So on Excel, I need to move some of these things. No, I'm just going to leave it. So on Excel, I need to capture also all this information on our X and Y. So let's go. Five, two, I'll just press enter when I go 12, enter, 9, enter, so that I just put all the values of X. I'm at the end for X. So if I click here, I can just you just need to let me just show you when it's bigger. So I don't have to, to use my eight. Don't do it like that. You need to click on the B of the last one and scroll to G. Make sure that all of them are highlighted. When you click in the cell, you just hold control or hold your mouse and then highlight and then insert. Just click insert there and say insert down and continue like that i need two more inside down and that will allow me to capture the other values so i'm on 15 i go enter and then i can put 25 enter uh, six i need six six enter 25 enter and then the last one is 16 so i've entered all the values and when you do enter your values you will see that the total will adjust as well uh, and all the other calculations will happen so i'll do the same 640 equal uh, 870 enter 500 enter 710 enter 440 enter 5 enter 420 enter and 600 and the excel will also do all the calculations so since my excel is my bad 
it will do all the calculations. And you must bear with me. Some of the things are just pictures that I I placed there because it's not easy to, to write them on Excel. Uh, like this is a picture, all of them. Uh, so looking at, I can answer my question. My intercept, which is B0, it's 766. Seven, uh, seven, my slope is 15. I have to click. My slope is 15. 0.48 my r is minus 76 and my r squared is 58 so all of them are there so let's make it bigger so that you can see all the values are there so whichever way you use you are, should be able to calculate and answer the question okay so that is me talking for the last time. Now we also need to be able to uh, estimate a value. So here we say the question is to estimate the value 10 years. So it means we need to go back to our question, which we have the slope and the intercept. We can write our equation y is equals to Uh, what was the slope? 76. 766.60. On this one, it says 60. And we know that the slope was minus 15.48x. So we can write the regression line. All what we need to do is 766.60 minus 15.48 times 10, because that is what we are estimating. Calculate. Um, I'll have to choose another calculator that I'm not using at this point. So we have 766.60. Plus, uh, not plus. Uh, let's delete minus 15.48 open bracket 10 close bracket equals 61180 six, one, one, eight, six, one, one, eight, that is the estimate that is the value so from the calculators that we used, we can go and estimate the value. So let's go and estimate the value. So on this calculator, I need to first press 10 because I'm estimating 10. Go shift, stat, rec, which is 5. Now I'm going to use the y hat for the estimation. And it will say 10 y hat. And when I press equal, I should get the same answer. So because this calculator that I was using, I ran out of the value there. That is why I'm not getting the same answer. But that is on your calculator. You do get the, exactly the same as what we have there. On the this one, I will be lying if I can tell you that I know how to estimate using this. Let's see. Because I've just learned it today. So let's see. Alpha. No, I don't think on this one we should we will be able to estimate uh, five. So you can also either use those values. It doesn't give the opportunity to estimate. So let's see again. Uh, nope. So you'll have to calculate it manually on this one as well. Get the values and estimate. So I just want to see the value of of it says six zero as well on this one so on excel since we already have this value we can estimate we can use the excel to estimate the value as well easy okay 
can take my that plus that times pen equals and there is my value so you can either come here and also calculate it it will still give you the same answer by just adding the two value and multiplying by your x or we could have just used our b0 and b v1 still give you the same answer that's regression Which one of the following statement is incorrect? I'm going to give you two minutes to read it through and then give me an answer. The correlation analysis determines the strength and the relation and the direction of a relationship between variables. The independent variable always influences the dependent variable. A negative slope is a simple linear regression shows oh a negative slope in a simple linear regression shows that there is a negative relationship between independent and dependent variable if the slope is equals to zero there is no relationship between the uh, the two variable when the coefficient of correlation is negative there is a weak relationship between two variables regardless of the magnitude of the R. Which one of this is incorrect? Remember, you can also answer in the chat if you can unmute and give me the answers. But I will, I will like it if you can unmute and talk to me so that the whole video or the whole recording is not me alone talking. Lizzie. Yes. I think it's option five. You think it's option five? Okay, so let's look at all the options and see if option five is the incorrect one. So option one, it says the correlation determines the strength and the relationship. Is that correct? That's what you are saying. Correct, ne? The independent variable always influences the dependent variable. Yes, that's correct because your independent, your dependent depends on independent variable. A negative slope in a linear regression shows that there is a negative relationship. So a negative, if this is negative, therefore it means this relationship is negative that is the slope so we look at the change in the values so that is correct number four it says if the slope is equals to zero then there is no relationship y hat is equals to b1 plus b0 uh, sorry b0 plus b1x if the slope here is zero does it that does does that mean there is no relationship if the slope is zero there will still be some sort of a relationship because y hat will sorry y hat won't have any relation to the x so there as well it means correct because if the slope here 
if the answer here is zero, therefore it means there is no relationship then between it to, the... I'm thinking it to multiply the x and it will be zero also. Y yes, because if the, if the slope is zero, then it's not there. So there is no relation to the x. So there is no relationship. So that is also correct. Here it says the coefficient of correlation, when it's negative, it means the relationship is weak regardless of the magnitude. So we know that it can also be zero, negative 0, 0,90, but that does not mean that this is a weak relationship, but this is a negative strong relationship. It's not weak. So that is incorrect. And that's how you will look at the options as well. Given the information, a research on the relationship between X and Y reveals the following information. Here they gave you the summations. N of 14, the sum of X is 52, the sum of Y, sum of X and Y, the sum of X squared, and the sum of Y squared. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? The first one it says is sum of X and Y incorrect. So if you forgot the formulas, the formulas are like this. For the summation of X and Y, which is sum of X and Y minus the sum of X times the sum of Y, you need to go calculate is equals to N. The sum of X, oh, let's put it at the top. To calculate this sum of X, The summation of x, we need to use the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared divided by n. That's the sum of x. Then we need to calculate the coefficient of, core, uh, no, the regression. So this is your B0 and your B1s. So let's write the formula down. B0 and B1. So we know that we need to calculate first B1. So to calculate B1, you need to go and use uh, B1 is your sum of X and Y minus the sum of X times the sum of Y divide by n, divide by the sum of x squared uh, I think it's the same as this. So it's, you can actually you will just take the values. Uh, let me not go and complicate your life here. Because if you, if those values are correct, then you can substitute them, which is SSXY divided by SSX will give you B1. To calculate B0, you will need Y hat, uh, mean of Y times B1 times mean of X, which the mean is just... Uh, mean of x is the sum of x divided by n. Mean of y is the sum, the sum of y. Oh, come on. Divide by n. And to substitute into those formulas, get that. Once, if this is correct, then you need to go and estimate the value of y. So making sure that you substitute this onto that formula. But that is if this is correct. Substitute into there and find out if that is correct. Calculating the coefficient of correlation. Here is the other thing. You need to know the sum, summation formula. So R is, I'm not going to repeat that because it's the same as the sum, sum square, 
measures of X and Y. So if you got the answer there for S, S, X, Y, you can use that. Divide by, uh, here you will have to go calculate the uh, sum, you will have to go and calculate sub square of Y, which is the sum of Y squared minus the sum of Y squared divided by N. That's what I'm going to do here at the bottom. I'm going to call this sum sum X times sum sum Y. So that you can just take the answer you got there and the answer you got there and substitute into the formula to calculate your coefficient of correlation. Oh gosh, now they also ask you to calculate SST. We know SST is given by SSR minus O plus SSE. So if so I many calculations. Pardon? I'm saying so many calculations in one. Yes. So we are dead. Easy to do. Don't worry. Okay, so in terms of the first question, the summation of X and Y is 382.85 minus the sum of X, which is 52.9 times 92.8 divide by n of 14. So you just need to go and calculate that. On this side, where we have the summation of x, we have x squared, which is 215.41, minus the sum of x, which is 52, point nine squared divide by 14 and then you go and find the answer for this that will be the sum for that one and then here on the mean you just need 52.9 divide by 14 and 92.8 divided by 14.
Okay, for the for number one, SSXY, the answer is correct. It's 32.198 uh, So that is correct. And the sum of X and Y, let's see if that one is correct as well. So we have 215.14. Minus five two point nine square. Sorry, Miss Lizzie. Yes, it's um, one four one. Thank you. Squared divide by fourteen which is equals to 15 point, so that is also correct. So this is also correct. Now we need to come to the second one. We need to calculate B1. So B1 is this answer day that we have on here. So if we can find this to be equals to that, therefore we are on the right track. So substituting 32 divided by 15, which is this formula that we have here. I'm not going to write all the values. So I'm just going to say 32.1 divided by 15.5. We will use all of them when, when we do on the calculator. So, on the calculator, I'm just going to use all of them. It's 32.19858. Am I missing a number? Nope. Divide by 15.5. Two, three, five, eight. Okay. And when we say equal, and the answer we get will be one is. So you need to write the answer for B one correctly, ne? So we know our B one. I'm just going to write the answer here, remove all this. We found the answer is 2.074, so it is that value there. 2.07417. That is B0. Yeah, sorry, P1. So B0. We know B0 is B1. It's by the mean. So did you calculate the mean there? Oh, yeah. The mean of Y. I'll start with the mean of Y. The mean of Y is 98. Uh, 92.8. Divide by 40. I'm going to do it on the calculator, the whole of it. So I'm not going to get the mean, the answer for the mean. Minus our B1, we did get it. It is 2.0.7417 times the mean of X is 52.9 divide by 14 and I close the bracket equals minus so minus 2 which is that value there sorry 
which is that very length. So this answer is minus 1.20883. So now it means this is incorrect. It's not the correct. It's not the correct formula. We cannot use this to estimate the value of X. So estimating the value of X, we need to use the correct formula, which should be Y hat is equals to our B minus, B0 is minus 1.20883 plus 2.0. 7417x. So we need to put here times 1.7. Uh, 1. 1.5. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. We 1. need to substitute 1.5 there. So did you calculate already? I get 0 0.26093. Oh, come on, none of my calculators want to look at. Let's use this one. And I prefer this one for some reason. So minus 1.20883 plus 2.07417 times 1.5. Close bracket. It's 1.9, which then it means this is correct. And the coefficient of correlation, oh gosh, yeah. The, therefore, it means they are all correct. The only incorrect answer, I'm not going to go through all of them now. The only incorrect answer, we've proved that it is the equation. You need to, because if that is also correct, then I've already proved that that one is the incorrect one. Uh, then you can also do your coefficient of correlation by substituting the value. Probably you will get that. You multiply by 100. When you get to the answer, you will multiply by 100. It will give you the, the answer. So remember also to first calculate this to substitute in today. The SST, um, you can also calculate it. Uh, let me just double check. Yeah. Uh, but you will need the coefficient. No, you will need point nine two. Zero eight. Yeah, you will need to calculate um, the SST using the formula. Uh, it's a long formula. I don't have it now, but you can check the notes for the formula to calculate the SST as well. It uses the SS, the sum square measures. Um, okay, so moving on. So these are the type of questions I would like to see in your exams because then it gives you an opportunity to either use the formulas or to use your calculator, which will be quick and easy to do. So try and see if you can answer this question on your own. Ask if you want to ask. You can also use the Excel sheet that I've shared with you as well because then it will be easier. You don't have to use the, the sum square measures. You can use the values. Pay attention to where your X is and where your Y is. X and Y. You need to pay attention. 
attention to that. Substitute correctly the values on your calculator. Let me know when you have an answer name. Okay, Lizzie. I am done. Okay. Okay, they say option four. Uh, okay, so I'm not sure how far others are. Do you want extra time? No response. So what I did when I went out, 
I completed all of this on the on Excel sheet. Um, capture my X on my X side, my Y on the Y, and have my totals. So if let me scroll up a little bit. If you look at my totals, there is my sum of y is 320. That's my 320. Sum of x is 175. Sum of x and y is 10,000. So it matches exactly the same. Sum of x squared is 575. And sum of y squared is that. To answer the questions, we just require all the values here yeah, on the site. So I'm just going to scroll to the site. Only, yeah, only those values. I just need that view. So yeah, about that. Trying to do so many things all at once. Sometimes it doesn't work the way you want it. Okay, so in order for us to answer these questions, we can look at the output there. The first one says the mean of X is 29. That is, said, is that correct? That is correct. Yes. The mean, the mean of, if you look at that, is 29.167. The mean of y is 30 is 53.33. That's correct. Yes. It's exactly the same. The slope. 1.4160. The slope is 1.1460. The intercept. 12 12.03554. 12.03554. And it says the equation, you need to write the equation y is equals to b0 plus b1. Look at what you got here on the slope, which is b1, your intercept, which is b0. If you substitute them onto that formula, no. does it give you that? And if I no. look at my. Yes, and if to I. Be the other at, way Yes, and also on the Excel spreadsheet, easy to see that this is incorrect. It should be like that. So that is the incorrect option. The relationship is strong. So you can check whether the relationship is strong because our R is 0 0.98. 0 0.98. And if you have used your calculator, which I didn't do, you would have also gotten the same the same answers. Yes, I used a calculator. You used the calculator. Yes. Yes. And it's easy with the calculator than using it's the actually faster. On, on Wednesday, I thought it would take time, but it's faster. Yes, with the calculator, it's faster because if if they give you a table and the summation, I don't have a problem. As long as they give you the summations, then I have a problem because it is time consuming to do the calculation using the formulas. <clears throat> uh, okay, what will be the coefficient of determination? So coefficient of determination on an Excel spreadsheet, we already calculated that. Sorry, that's R squared is 0 0.959. Uh, is it R squared or R? R squared, coefficient of determination is R squared. So take the coefficient of, the, of correlation that you calculated here, if you did calculate it, go calculate so R on your calculator. So go find R and then press the X squared button. Okay. So on Excel, it's zero point nine five nine nine. 
9599. Yeah, so if we run off the values, I think we will get this Zero point one nine. as an option. Mm. Oh. Because the answer here is 0 0.95, 9952, which will be. Round it off, yeah, which will be that one. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, the SSTs. I don't have the summations for the SST on this one, but I I try to also work it out here. Yeah, if you if you are going to use if you are given the x and y values, then you can calculate the SSTs using this. But there is the summation formulas. We covered them early in the in the session as well, so you can use. Is that. it the one? Is it the one for y one minus y bar all squared? I'm not sure now, but some of the formulas, usually the formulas are given to you in the exam when you go right, so you don't have to scratch your head to remember what formula to, or what formula um, can I use, because you will be given, you can just identify that one that calculates SST and then you use that. Okay, now take your regression line and estimate the value of 23. So since we have the previous question that we had, we were estimating there, we already calculated that. So instead of 10, I can just use 23 and enter. And the answer is 44.60. That will be the new value. So on your calculator, since you still have the values on your calculator, what you do is press 23 and then I don't know which calculator you are using and go look for that Y hat like that. Or when you use the Casio, you will select the one with the Y hat. It's written in orange on the sharp calculator. On the sharp calculator, it will be that function there. So you will press second function that to get to your 20 to the estimated value. If you are using a Casio, you will have to go shift a uh, step and then go look for the y hat under the reg function. And that will give you the same answer. And if you are using the Excel spreadsheet, remember you can take this formula that you have and just work it out, multiply. So you just take the formula and multiply the value of 23 to the slope equation. Any questions before we move to the next question? Next question. I'm also going to do it on the calculator this time, and I will do it on the Excel. Let me not hide your values.
Okay, are we done? Yes. Okay, we can look at if we're using Excel to answer the questions. Let's see if we can get all the answers correctly now. It says the mean of X is four. That's correct. The mean of Y is six. Correct. That's correct. V1, it's correct. Correct, yes. So all what you can do as well here is to increase or decrease the the decimals. So to get the same answer as what they have, you just go to the decimals and there is a number function and you just increase and you will see that you will get the same. <clears throat> the same decimals. OK, and that's B1. So then it says the equation B1, uh, now you must be very careful what how they wrote this. As you can see that the value is multiplying x, ne? So we need to rewrite the equation as we know it. It will be y hat is equals to B1x because B1 needs to multiply x yes. minus B0. Regardless of whether they write it like y hat is equals to B0 plus B1, X, we always need to know that B1 multiply X. The slope always multiplies the X, so they can re rearrange, sorry, rearrange the equation, but it will always be the same. So this same equation can be written as B1X plus B0, so which is what they wrote this one day. So is that correct? Is no. our uh, our intercept? We need to go to the intercept. What is our intercept? It's B one. So is our B one that? Oh, sorry, B zero, which is our intercept. So therefore, this is an incorrect formula. So this will be incorrect. So in a way, I can also double check all those values by using. Uh, we didn't use this calculator, so I must find the right one. So this is the calculator we used. Uh, 1.78 and 1.28 is my my A and my B, so this is incorrect. Uh, <clears throat> and it says the slope is positive, and my slope is positive because the answer of R is 0, 0,98 on this calculator. 0, 989 uh, 986 which is 99 so if i look at excel as well do i find the same what is the slope is the same sorry the the r r is actually it says the slope not r the slope is positive and we know that the slope is positive in in that instance <clears throat> and uh, the next question is estimate the value sorry estimate the value where x is 8 so where x is 8 we can come here and we change our 23 and make it 8 and say equals and that is the answer that we get. So in terms of a calculator, I have used a different calculator to capture the data again as well, which is this. Then I can go and estimate the value of 8, which is 8, shift, start, 5 rank, and I go to 5. I should be getting the same Oh. 
and I should be getting the same answer, which is, means that is the incorrect question. This one they gave a lot of values, 11 values. Oh, gosh. It's going to take us forever. Calculate the coefficient of correlation, which is R. Also, the same thing you can do is capture the data on your calculator, or you can use your formulas because they gave you your sum square measures. You can, uh, if you're lazy to capture those values, you can some rely on the formula, which I'm going to rewrite it, but it's just this n times the sum of x on y minus the sum of y times the sum of x divide by, I'm going to do them separately to these tables, the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared divided by n multiplied by the sum of y squared minus sum of y squared over n. And you can just substitute the values. Sum of x and y. Eight four two one six times n. There are eleven. There were eleven students minus the sum of x is nine three six times the sum of y is nine nine zero. Divide by sum of x squared seven nine six eight two minus the sum of x nine three. Multiply by sum of y squared eighty nine one four zero minus the sum of y nine nine zero squared divide by eleven. Or if you use your formulas, you can use your your Excel to capture the data. Here we have seven, so I need to add one, two, three, four. I need to add four columns. So since I know how many columns I want to add, I can just come here and select four rows. Where I'm selecting more. One, two, three, four. Yes, four, and then I say insert, and then down to just insert four, four rows. The data. And I've captured all of them. Coming to the Y. Ninety. Ninety one. 
91. And when you capture the data, you need to be very careful as well. Why are my values different to their values? Oh, because the summation didn't continue with this one. So you just drag the formulas. So if you have, you just drag them. They will populate the whole row. And we got our coefficient of correlation, which is R, is number four. Somebody shouted number four. So that person was very quick to answer the question. So that is number four. Number four. Because on our Excel, you can also do this on your calculator as well. But I think I'm relying on the Excel. The answer of the coefficient of correlation from Excel. Is minus 62.46, which is the same as that. So. In regression pro problem. If the coefficient of determination is 95, this means that, remember, in the variation of y is explained. So the total variation in variation of x. Oh, that's not an x. This is x, more or less. That is how you interpret r squared. So you have r squared. How do you interpret it in terms of that 0.95? Is it one, two, three, four, or five? Option two. I think they made a mistake there by putting the percentage. It will be option two because option two will say 95% of the variation in Y. Oh, maybe I should be using the right English. In Y is explained by the variation in X, which is number two. What is the percentage of total variation in candy bar sales not explained by the regression model? Oh, not explained, that's the key word there. Not explained by the regression model. So it means we're looking for the errors. So, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Only six rows, so it means I must delete the other rows. Also, when you delete, one, two, three, four, five, six, so I must end there. So to delete, also you start by column B, highlight all of them, 
all of the other er the rows that you don't want, right click and say delete and move the sh shift up so that the thing goes up and your N is, it doesn't change any of the calculation. So. <clears throat> Okay. We need to read the sentence, the question, because there are we need to know which one is our R and which one is our Y in this instance. A candy bar Manufacturer is interested in trying to estimate how sales are influenced by the price of their product. Sales are influenced by the price. So how sales are influenced by the price. How X influences Y. So it means this is our X. Uh, how sales are influenced by their price. So this is our Y and this is our X. X and Y. So we capture the data. One. When three zero, which this is very tricky because it's got the point decimals. Type one point eight zero. Okay. Two point five zero. I'm not gonna do two point zero just because of time. Two point four <coughs> and what did I skip? Oh, 2.9, We're looking for Total variation not explained by. Which ones are explained by? So we'll know which ones are explained by, which are my R squared. <sighs> the ones that are not explained by that will be one minus percentage and the answer is 22.61 oh, decimals let's go so option number one so this one x the, this r squared tells you what the, the total variation that is explained by the um the regression model remember that so the R squared here will give you that total variation. The one that is not explained by the model are the errors. And those will be the errors. Twenty one point six one. So which is option number one will be your correct answer. This would have been correct if we were only looking for R squared, but we're not looking for R squared, we're looking for the other variation that are not explained in the model. Okay, using the same information, which is this information, the prediction of candy given the candy price is 150. What will be the price? Okay, so we need to
what this is not right sorry it's not right what will be the prediction of the number of sales given that the price is 150 it cannot be a price it has to be a number of i don't know why they have a sale day the price there um anywho let's see going back so that should be because we estimating we have a price of 150 sorry my we have a price of 150 it's 89 so it shouldn't have been 89 like a rent value it should just be there will be 89 cents 89.10 um sorry there shouldn't be those r's in front because we estimating the sales so it should just be 89.10 wherever i got this from i think it was from a tutorial letter most of the tutorial letters have errors <clears throat> so we just bear with those ones so this because it's sales it should be actual number because sales are actuals not uh not prices and here we are predicting the sales given that the price is that so we've predicted that it's 89 in the last two minutes that is left let's finish off yeah it says calculate the sse your oh, gosh who sse so do we know what our sst is equals to s ssr minus sse yes we do because lucky for me sse i did all those on excel so here are your calculation of sses and ssr based on that information that we have i must just make sure double check okay no it's not based on that information we need to copy and paste Sorry about the flicking. You see, working on two different, uh, different thingy. You need to copy the values of X and Y. Only those values, not with the total. The total will calculate. Copy, paste, and I hope these are six. One. Okay, we'll see when we copy and paste the values there. So, okay, it works, it works, it's working. All right, so it calculated the SSE, SSR, and SST. And we know the formula is SSE will be, if we move SSE, I just want to double check if I have the right formula for SSE. It's plus. Yes. Just make sure that we have. So therefore it's SST minus SSR, which will give us SSE, which therefore SSE will be equals to Actually, I've already calculated it. It's 1062. 
is it 62 or 58? Now there is a discrepancy here. 62.58. Let's just double check if my formula works is working correctly. So as the estimations, I see it's using the right formulas. So So this should say the SSE, if we don't use the SST, uh, SST minus SSR, we can use the summation. So it says it's your Y hat minus the estimate of your Y squared. So on yeah. That is this. So we estimated the y hat, subtract the uh, 100 minus that squared. And that's what we did for all of them. So it's, it's the same thing. Doing the same. Doing the same. Doing the same. Doing the same. And the answer is 1062.5 because it's the summation of all of them. It should be 1062.58, which is none of the answers on here. Probably this was is the closest one. Because even if I use the the two. It would have been SST SST minus SSR. It's the same. Okay, so I will assume that there was an errata on these questions as well because they come from a tutorial letter of the previous years. But then that would have been the the closest one. Uh, with that concludes today's session. So I will see you on Wednesday when we continue with other activities. So, but nothing stops you from going through activity 16 until 23. So there are only those 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, no. 22, and 23. So we will also go through them on, um, on Wednesday and including also the chi-square test. So the first hour, remember, it will be for chi-square and the second hour will be for regression. So I'm not going to add as many questions because I think also for the chi-square, we didn't also complete all the activities. So we're going to combine both. So I, I might not create new activities. Any uh, questions, uh, comments? Um, uh, all this was, uh, where can I get these uh, uh, Excel uh, templates and these exercises these questions? Uh, which templates now? Sorry. For this, uh, this regression, Excel. The Excel sheet. Okay. Yeah, are you it. on the what? Are you on the WhatsApp group? I'm on the WhatsApp group. I don't know which of the WhatsApp group. Uh. uh so there is a WhatsApp group. Wait. Let me do this. Just give me a sec. I'm going to stop recording.